Hello everyone, I'm Karthu, and today we're discussing what if Goku and Vegeta were the same age. Now, based on my teaser in the community tab, a lot of you think that I'm making Goku older, but actually I'm making Vegeta younger. So, Vegeta, instead of being born in age 732, is born in age 737, which is two or three years before the destruction of planet Vegeta. If this talk of ages and destruction of planet Vegeta being two or three years after the birth of Goku is confusing to you, make sure you watch my Dragon Ball Timeline Explained video so you know the canon timeline. So, with that being said, our story starts on planet Vegeta, and let's get into it. So, the age is 737, a Vegeta is born, and the scientists of Planet Vegeta assess his potential to be that of an elite Saiyan warrior, one like they've never seen before. News that brought a smile to the face of King Vegeta. This confirmed King Vegeta's predictions from five years ago. In age 732, a Saiyan was born that broke all known records for latent potential. The king saw this as a sign that the Saiyans were experiencing a period of accelerated growth, and if the son of the lowly Paragus could achieve such heights, then his own son, the prince, could exceed them. This could be the beginning of freedom for the Saiyans, the opportunity for rebellion that King Vegeta has sought for so very long. That same year, but below the palace, in the towns of the lower class Saiyans, another birth had happened. It was an unremarkable birth, a Saiyan with such a low battle power that most planets that contained any form of life would be too much for the child to handle. Bardock laughed, realizing that his second son would be relegated to the same fate as him, assigned to a team that wipes out weaker planets or planets when the moon is full. At least Raditz was able to break the cycle a little. His latent power has the potential to make him a middle class warrior in rank. Even as a child, he's being assigned to the same team as mid-class warriors like Nappa. Unfortunately, fate wasn't as kind to Kakarot. Bardock leaves, ready to conquer the next world, but something feels different this time. A connection he's never really felt before. A few years pass when an order is put out for all Saiyans to return to planet Vegeta. Most don't think much of the order, but Bardock is suspicious as to why they'd be called back and by Frieza no less. If they're all on planet Vegeta, then Frieza is losing money, resources, and slowing his empire's expansion. Bardock of course has his suspicions confirmed when he finds out that Frieza was asking about the Super Saiyan legend. So, in an act of defiance and preservation, Bardock steals a Saiyan ship and sends his toddler child off-world to planet Earth the only planet weak enough to most likely not give Kakarot much trouble. His connection with his son was something he'd never had before with Raditz. It was a change of heart, and the realization that his legacy would live on not through himself, but through his children. Bardock then realized that Raditz would soon make his way back to planet Vegeta as well, so he took a risk and tried to communicate directly with his son via a scouter. He told him that things were fine on planet Vegeta, so he should just finish up the planets he's assigned instead of heading back. The message hopefully being well-intentioned enough to not garner unwanted attention from Frieza's agents who were listening in. However, despite his best efforts, Frieza's men of higher ranking informed Nappa's team to return to planet Vegeta, as Lord Frieza wants an audience of all Saiyans. In the original continuity, it's Vegeta who tells Raditz that they should ignore the call to return but Raditz was pretty reluctant to the idea of staying where they were in that situation as well. So as if the imminent threat of Frieza couldn't be any worse, Raditz and Nappa are now on planet Vegeta as well. At the same time, up on the top of the cliffs of planet Vegeta and in the castle of the royal family, King Vegeta is questioning why Frieza wishes to have all the Saiyans in one place at once as well. None of it makes sense to him, so, he needs to consult his royal advisor, Paragus. You see, Paragus piggybacked off the success of his son. Just over seven years old, 
Broly has grown into a fine warrior, and under the guidance of Paragus, has won many planets almost entirely single-handedly. Due to Paragus' exceptional skills in raising a boy with immense latent potential, King Vegeta made him an advisor, so that when his own son comes of age, Paragus can train him as well. But that day is not today. More pressing issues arose as the confusion surrounding the Frieza situation was only increasing due to the silence coming from Frieza's end. Paragus had only one suggestion, a private meeting with Lord Frieza to discuss what is happening, perhaps even indulge his ego a little bit by asking how the Saiyans could better serve him. King Vegeta hated the idea of inflating that maniac's ego any more than it already was, but he was left with no choice. The safety of his kingdom, of his race, and of his son counted on him to handle the situation as tactfully as possible. Since he's the king of the Saiyans, Vegeta has special access to Frieza's ship. Paragus joined him in this meeting and Broly was brought along as well. Paragus explained that Broly may one day serve as advisor to King Vegeta IV, and seeing how an advisor must act in meetings would be great experience for him. The three boarded Frieza's ship and made their way to the cockpit, where Frieza, Dodoria, and Zarbon were. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Now isn't this a pleasant surprise? A visit from the king himself? Did you not hear my order for all Saiyans to be on planet Vegeta? I'm afraid that includes you, your majesty. The three Saiyans kneel to Frieza, and King Vegeta apologizes for disobeying his orders, as he only sought to know the reason for the gathering. You wish to know my reasons? They are as simple as this. Zarbon, use your scouter on the three of them. Zarbon scans them and reports King Vegeta's power level as exceeding 10,000, Paragus as being in the 4,000s, and Broly being well over 12,000. As you can see, your younger generations are getting quite strong, and I'd hate to see them try some kind of foolish rebellion against me. So, I figure I'll eliminate that issue preemptively. With that, Frieza fires a death beam straight through the chest of Broly, killing him instantly. Paragus is in shock, but King Vegeta quickly realizes that they need to leave now. So he grabs Paragus and flies towards the docking bay, where they landed their ship. Frieza laughs and tells Zarbon and Dodoria to pursue them. The king is flying at full speed, but is stopped short by Dodoria in front of him. In a panic, King Vegeta turns around, only to see Zarbon blocking his escape. The king unleashes all of his power. But it's no use. The pair of Frieza's men are completely unfazed by the attacks. They finish off Paragus and King Vegeta like they were nothing. Less than a month passes. Bardock tries to throw a rebellion, but fails. He dies with his planet. Every Saiyan is dead, except for Goku. And Tarble, but we don't need to talk about him. This is the point where you're wondering, how is this only one part? That's because... Earth doesn't ever have Saiyans arrive on it, so everything in the original Dragon Ball is the same, but the Saiyan arc doesn't happen. This means there's no reason for Earthlings to go to Namek, and no way for Frieza to find out about the Dragon Balls either. We also know that Earth isn't worth much, so the odds of Frieza going to conquer the planet are slim at best. As for the future of Earth, the biggest threat would be Piccolo until the androids came around and wiped everyone out. Then, the Boo saga would occur as it did in the future timeline, only this time, Boo would hatch, leading to the devastation of the universe. Beerus would awaken a few years later, to find out that all Saiyans no longer exist, and he would destroy for a little bit before returning to sleep. Shampa would still gather the Super Dragon Balls, but with no tournament to bet them on, and no Earth food tasted, to have him lust after the planet, we don't know what he'd wish for. All of this would culminate in Zeno looking at mortal levels across the 12 universes, and erasing the 8 lowest ones. That includes Universe 7. We haven't done a dark what if in a while, but this should really make it clear why Vegeta being older is important. His orders, 
comparisons to him and his arrival on planet Earth are all so pivotal to making the plot happen that making him younger makes everything fall out of whack. But with that, you have what if Goku and Vegeta were the same age? More specifically, what if Vegeta was Goku's age? Make sure to leave your what if suggestions in the comments down below. Thanks for watching! Make sure to hit the like button, leave your opinions and counterpoints in the comments down below, and hit subscribe and the notification bell. That way you get to stay up to date on the channel and everything that goes on with it. If you're interested, please check out the merch store to support the channel in another way that gives you something in return. But till next time, peace!